Hello, everyone. My name is Krzysztof Krawczyk. Uh, and first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for letting me to present here today. Uh, I would like to talk about upconverting nanoparticles as a tool for tissue evaluation. Uh, and I represent a company called Lumito from Lund in Sweden. Uh, we are a small company and we are one of several spin-offs from research group from Lund University professor Stefan Andersson Engels. Um, our main focus in the company is medical research and development of a novel imaging technology based on upconverting nanoparticles, UCNPs, and we would like to facilitate transfer to digital pathology. And our main goals are improving IHC accuracy and workflow by and also enabling automated analysis by introduction of um, UCNP IHC based staining kit and um, slide scanner. And some of the main advantages of UCNPs are no background fluorescence. It's because they are characterized by anti Stokes effect, where the excitation wavelength is completely different from emission wavelength. So there is no background um, fluorescence in this case. And the signal can, can be quantified because there is direct correlation between number of particles and the signal strength. There is no photo bleaching. You can image the slides st stained with UCNPs many times and over a prolonged time. They are very stable. The slides stained with UCNPs can be stored in room temperature without any problems. There is great potential for multiplexing because the emission spectrum of the signal is very narrow, so you can have many different colors in one image. Uh, they can be used in standard automated IHC setup, so standard auto stainer is perfectly fine for staining. And the output format will be DICOM. And now I'd like to show you just some images um, from the staining with UCNPs. Uh, here it's a colon sample um, stained with pancytokeratin. And what I hope you can appreciate here is that there is no background tissue. So we believe that it will be much easier for automated analysis um, since there is no background tissue here. Um, another advantage is that the UCNP signal can be shown on one image with hematoxylin or HNE staining, um, which would normally autofluoresce in uh, immunofluorescence staining. But here, since the wavelength uh, for the excitation is completely different from the emission, you can have both at the same time. And then the pathologist can choose whether they show both layers at the same time or just switch between them. So you just need one slide to, to get both signals. And here, just an example of um, the details that we can get with this staining. It's a breast cancer cell line stained with, uh, in this case, uh, beta-actin. Um, thank you, and I'll be happy to say, take some questions uh, and also talk with you by my poster. It's poster number 26. Thank you. Quick questions? Okay, so if I've got this right, um, a, a benefit here is there's no auto fluorescence. Really. Yes. That's a major of benefit, yes. I think. And you're linking that with morphology of H and E so that you can do the same. Yes, yeah, so exactly. normally dab yeah. staining would obscure the thermal morphology, but here you can show both at the same time or just choose one because uh, nanoparticles are not visible in bright field. Sure. So you do an immunistic chemistry. We know that some immunistic chemistry pretreatments, particularly more and more, can then affect the morphologies. Have you seen that effect? Sorry, um, if you if you if you're doing standard immunistic chemistry, you can see pretreatments can have more effect on morphologies. Can you then have you seen that effect using the methodologies? Uh, I mean, the, back this, into the H and E. Um, in this case. There should be no difference in, I mean, morphology should not be affected in any way by, by this staining no. and combining it with H&E. Okay. 